Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my previous movie reviews and vlogs and, and everything. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to hang out here with me. Um, and feel free to add your comments, questions, you know, conspiracy theories in the comments below each of my movie review videos because that's why I make them. I love to talk about movies. If you're new here, I'm Sarah. Welcome. Today I'm going to share a little bit of the weird and why I love movies. Movies are not just a visual medium. They're an audio medium. I love long form mediums. And it's not just how something looks or the style or the way that it's shot that grabs my attention. Sometimes it's the way that it sounds. There are some movies that I just enjoy listening to. The, the sound design, the music design, the way everything is put together, the voices of the actors. For me, that can be the draw into a story or into a character. The Night House is a quiet horror thriller. So the story begins with death. A woman's husband has taken his own life and the, the first time we meet our main character, our protagonist, she's coming back from the funeral. Right away, it sets you up to think that the story is being told is not what you're expecting because we skipped everything that would normally be shown and, you know, establish character development, establish context, you know, the setting and all that. We skip all that. We skip past the point where he's walking out to the pier, he gets into the boat, takes his own life. Who discovers him? We don't know. We assume it was her, but we don't go into detail because we don't need to know. Um, we don't need to know about what the preparations were like for her to make. Um, we don't need to go through meeting his family, meeting her family. We don't need that. So we start on the day of the funeral. She's coming back home alone. And we are seeing her at night of her dealing with grief, like genuine grief and the loss of her husband and anger. And that's what caught my attention because she's not just sad. She's pissed off. And that was a whole new kind of character experience in this context. It's not that, oh, he, you know, he was killed by a drunk driver or, you know, was driving home one night and it was raining or something like that. And you could tell by the house that they lived in, the jobs that they've had, you can tell that they've been together a very long time, that this wasn't like young, fresh, new love. This was worn in groove love where they knew each other like inside and out and were content with their lives as far as she knew. Not perfect, but this event really like blindsided her. So after the funeral, when we see her moving through the house alone, we get a few bits of her personality. But when she goes back to work, we find out that she is a teacher and it's during the summertime, so the students are not there. I appreciate all of these little details that build this world that she lives in and that, you know, her coworkers are in and her neighbors are in because this hit close to home. So these are the places where she will be. So we need these details in order to build the story. Anyway, sorry, I got, I got sidetracked. Anyway, so she goes back to work. Her interacting with a parent really gives you a strong idea of the type of person that she is. Her hanging out with coworkers after work and them talking about, you know, just work stuff to distract her. And then her weird, awkward sense of humor about the situation, finding out who she's really close to out of her coworkers and slowly learning more and more about the circumstances surrounding her husband's death. Not just from 
the immediate perspective of her like him dying it was her sort of following a mystery trying to unravel the mystery of his death by going through his books and going through his phone you know trying to figure out what was the catalyst all of which is understandable at the same time there are truly unsettling things happening in her house and there are small things but deeply unsettling especially in combination with the fact that her husband just died and where he died the stereo turning on and playing the song that they played at their wedding um loud her um waking up and not remembering falling asleep her dream states that seem to fall into other memories or thinking that she is just about to fall asleep and really she is just waking up that in-between state and the way that they're shown is very very sophisticated very modern horror these um super clean clips of uh doors moving as though they've like just been pushed open but there's no one there fingerprints handprints the sound of expelled air the sound of breathing uh this hyper close focus on sensations like pressure it's a very interesting take and as time goes on and she starts to acknowledge that these inexplicable things are happening and that it's her husband's ghost how that makes her feel and her not knowing what to do but still continuing to look through his things she finds some photographs of women that look very similar to her and she decides to try to find one of them and she does and she confronts her about um the relationship that she thinks that this person had with her husband because she hadn't again she had no idea that this was happening that this was going on so she wants to know everything and she has an aggressive uh, way about her as she goes through this that is very like engaging because it's like what is she going to do <laughs> like her attitude and demeanor seems so like she could do anything she could have like stabbed her in the heart in the next moment and you would have been shocked by that but not that she did it <laughs> so it was really about like watching like oh what is she gonna do when she finds out this bit of information or that bit of information the more we learn the less we understand so many actions that characters took or bits of information were so surprising that you just wanted to see how the pieces of the puzzle were going to come together and then actually finding a house across the lake that apparently her husband was building and she had no idea and all of that is a, there's a genuine curiosity to this story like what the hell does that mean her finding drawings in his books and the books that he was reading and more clues to something that you really don't know where it's going to lead until the very end and every time you think you you can sort of identify you can sort of understand some more bit of information an event or a person or a revelation will come along that will completely blow your theory out of the water it's not flashy it's not like jump scare jump scare it's a movie that requires the viewer to really look and observe from end to end the screen and to listen. And I really enjoy movies that really grab a hold of the audience. Like, hey, you're not just going to watch what's happening. You're going to feel it. In The Night House, they do that through the use of certain sounds, um, creating a lot of ambient sounds 
by the location. It's a house on a lake, so you hear water lapping, you hear trees, leaves rustling, branches rubbing against each other, you hear um, birds, uh, random animals. Because they're on a lake, they have boats, so when someone walks down to the pier, you hear like the sound of their footsteps on the wood, the creaking sound of the weight of them standing there. There are all of these small noises and sounds that really draw in the viewer. So the night house is in my collection, 100%. The cast is super small. It's not so small that you even notice it. I give the night house, I give it a five out of five. I do, I give the night house a five out of five. It genuinely surprised me. I had a really firm idea of what I thought the movie was gonna be about and I was dead wrong. The acting was great. The cinematography was great. The story is actually very unique. You know, it's not unique that a woman's husband committed suicide under mysterious circumstances. That's not unique. Uh, it's not unique that she thinks that his ghost is wandering around their home. That's not unique. But the way that this story is told in combination with like five other crucial bits of information make the story unique. Even though, you know, the cast is small, the setting is small, we don't need, we don't need all that extra bit. We need the neighbor that they were close to. We need to know they lived there long enough that they were there when his wife was alive and how they helped him through his grieving process after she passed away. We need those care. We have what we need to create an interesting, engaging, suspenseful, thrilling horror story here so five out of five highly recommend it what did you all think please let me know in the comments below i'm there and just thank you all for spending your time here with me and i'll see you guys next time